Welcome to this video tutorial on the new Vanderbilt SPC two-way wireless portfolio. In this video we will show you how to enroll all the two-way wireless devices onto our SPC controller using the SPC built-in web interface. Our SPC bidirectional wireless system is made up of our wireless transceiver, the SPC W120. This is required for two-way wireless transmission to all our devices. It also requires the SPC to be upgraded to 3.9. You place the SPC W120 onto the SPC controller into modem slot 2. That's the slot on the right-hand side, as illustrated. I recommend that you power the PCB down completely prior to the installation of the SPC W120. So you place it into modem slot 2, as I said on the right hand side, as shown in the illustration. You then connect your antenna, SMA connector, onto the PCB itself, as shown. And then you mount the antenna onto the metal cabinet, onto the outside of the metal cabinet. Make sure that the antenna is tightly screwed onto the board so you get maximum reception from all the devices. The antenna itself has a built-in tamper and it shows you the tamper lead. You snip the plastic covering off the end, about 5mm, and then using the T1 or T2 auxiliary tamper on the main PCB, you plug the white cable into one of these and tighten down. So now you have the antenna itself tamper-proof. So if anybody damages or cuts the antenna, uh, you will get a tamper on the panel itself. To start the enrollment process, we must first enable the two-way wireless. And this is done through the web interface. We enter the engineer code followed by the engineer password and select login. From there, we put the panel into full engineer mode and then we go down to our configuration options and directly to wireless. We then enable the two-way wireless option. We finally click save and the panel is now ready for the enrollment process. I will first demonstrate on how to enroll the WPIR. It's a 12 meter passive infrared detector. We first put the panel into discovery mode. This means that the panel is listening for new devices. We click on the wireless menu and click on enroll new sensor. We then take our device and we place the battery into the device. When we put the battery initially into it, it puts the device into enroll transmission mode. In this case, the WPIR, the wireless PIR detector, goes into an auto diagnostic mode, first of all. And this takes about 20 seconds. At the end of this mode, it sends a three second enrollment transmission. This is represented by the flashing green LED. When we get a steady green LED, it means that the device has enrolled onto the SPC system. The panel now discovers the new device and displays it on the discovering page. This device at the moment is pending, so to finally add it to the system, we click on the plus symbol on the right hand side and we now type in the zone description, in this case PIR. We select the zone number, the zone type, and the area that it's applicable to. We finish this process off by selecting the save button. The wireless PIR is now active on the SPC system.
The same process is used for enrolling the WMAG device. This is a wireless contact. We select the enroll new sensor as before. We open the device and we place the CR133A battery into it, making sure we have the positive with positive and negative with negative. The device pairs up and sends the three second enrollment transmission to the panel and gets a green st steady LED response, meaning that the device has been discovered by the panel. We can now check the wireless discovering page. In this case, I've refreshed the page to speed up the process. And we can see that the device has learned onto the system. At the moment, this device status is pending, meaning it has been discovered, but we have not initialized it onto the system as a zone number. Please note the serial number as well under the serial column, and make sure that this serial number represents the same as the device we learned on to make sure we have the right device. All devices have the serial number printed on them. Rather than adding this device straight away onto the system by selecting the plus button, we can speed up the enrollment process by enrolling each device one after the other. And we can add these devices on at a later stage when the enrollment process is finished. I can illustrate this by enrolling the devices one after the other. You can see on the screen that the devices are now pending. They add on to the discovering page and they are pending. I then enroll in the next device and it appears again on the discovering screen. You can see that I have two magnetic contacts and a PIR. And now I can add these devices onto the system, initialize them onto the system and give them zones, zone types and so on. You can see this by clicking on the plus symbol on the right hand side of the page. And here you can add in the zone description, zone number, the zone type, and finally the area. Here we have the WPIR curtain. Again, the enrollment process is the same. The panel web page, you select the enroll new sensor, and then you open up the device and you place the battery in the device itself to start the enrollment transmission process. Like the standard WPIR, the curtain PIR also has this 20 second self-diagnostic test when you place the battery into it. You can see it going from green to red for this time period. Again, at the end of this time period, it gives a three second 
enrollment transmission and then we get a steady red green LED excuse me to indicate that it has been learnt onto the panel. To complete the enrollment process, we go to the web page again on the SPC controller. We make sure that we select the correct device, again referencing the serial numbers. And we add that device to the system by putting in the zone description, again the zone type, and finally clicking on the save button. You can see from the wireless list, these are all the devices that are enrolled and learned onto the system. Next I'll show you how to enroll the user remote fob or the WRMT. This is slightly different than enrolling the PIR or contacts. Rather than using the wireless menu, we use the users menu. We select the wireless fob menu on the top and the system is now ready to accept any WRMT enrollments. To send the enrollment transmission from the WRMT, you simply press the two bottom buttons. This sends the transmission and we get a response from the transceiver on the panel saying that it has been acknowledged and it's now enrolled on the SPC system. We can verify this by refreshing the wireless fob page and we should see the new device on the list. You can see there the fob, again the serial number, and we can verify that this, it's the correct fob that we've actually enrolled. To add the fob to a user, we go to the users menu. Again, we select edit, and we select RF fob, assign fob. and we complete it by clicking on the add button. So this WRMT is now assigned to user one. Again, we can verify that in the user list by seeing that the fob is active under the fobs column. And again, we can verify by the serial number and make sure that it's correct WRMT. This concludes our video on how to enroll the SPC two-way wireless devices using the web browser. To summarize, the system requires the SPC W120 transceiver and also it requires that the SPC panel is upgraded to firmware version 3.9. You can download the SPC 3.9 firmware from our spcsupportinfo.com webpage. If you like this content, please don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and click the no notification button as well. Also, give us a thumbs up by clicking on the like button and make a comment in the comment list below. Thank you and goodbye.